now you may say, why is he showing me this again? Why is he explaining that he owns a, a Tesla? I'll tell you why in just a moment. In fact, I'm gonna grab a seat in this and do an introduction to this video. Let me just uh, adjust this power seat. I don't normally use this side. There you go. Welcome people. Um, <laughs> My self adjust you see, every time I get in it, whatever. I don't normally mess with this. This is the wife's side. Thank you for coming back yet again to the channel. This one is purely about China and the way that I feel it's going to be taking over the auto world. Why? How? How quick? You know, who to blame? Who not to blame? And there's a, there's a, it's very complex. It's, it's, it's a bit political, but I'm going to try and keep out of the politics. This is purely about cars. This is about the automotive side of electric vehicles in particular. I'm not really going to touch on the petrol side of China made cars because they don't interest me one iota. And really deep down, I don't think China's really bothered about them either because of the EV sales that are happening over there are enormous. I'm going to start with the obvious. In this car, not only does it have Chinese LFP batteries, which are excellent, but the whole of this item that we're sitting in here was all made in China. Now, if you're a Tesla fan, you'd know that the standard LFP model from that year was made in Shanghai and not in America, anywhere else in the world. Purely assembled, made in China. There are companies now selling as many as Tesla worldwide and not just for the Chinese market. I'm just very glad that Tesla has got a presence over in China at the moment. And I say that because it, it, it still flies the American flag a tiny bit or the Western flag, because let's face it, that Tesla brand is still 100% American. In China, there are more than 80 brands. These will dilute as the years go on. Some will survive, some won't. Most of the badges you see here are the more major brands. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, as I said at the beginning of this. How many can you name? Now, as we speak, there's probably only about four or five major Chinese brands that are already here in Europe or will be designated for the European marketplace. There's a few in Australia that you'll probably not hear of for a while because Australia is going to be one of their biggest marketplaces. In the US, I, I really do not know. I think the Americans are going to be very, very boisterous about this and not want Chinese cars as much as the rest of the world. But again, geopolitics, I'm afraid, people. But it may be America's loss. What you are seeing here is battery manufacturing. This is mainly all done in China. Whilst we were basically carrying on with fossil fuel cars, China was advancing no end with its electric vehicles. This has gave it about a five year upper hand over the rest of the world. Also, all the technology, all the infrastructure and everything else for most EVs that you'll buy comes from China when it comes to the battery technology and the supply. The issue with battery technology is that even if we started now, as the rest of the world, to try and catch up, it would take nearly a decade. So I'm afraid we can't do anything more than just let China carry on being the king when it comes to battery technology. We will have an input, there's no doubt about that, as the Western world, but nowhere near as a catch up, uh, because as we go forward, the Chinese go forward. It's as simple as that. So we either work with them or we don't. If we don't work with them, we won't get the technology. So I'm afraid that the geopolitics that's played are going to come to an end. OK, let's take a look at these brands here. BYD for the UK, the Seal, the Atto 3 and the Dolphin. Now, they're already here. More to follow, people. Trust me on this one. The Dolphin's a small, compact car, great starter EV, Atto 3, SUV type, midsize. And then, of course, they've got your Seal there. That's meant to be a Tesla 3 Beta. Well, I'll hold uh, me middle ground on that one. 
Both great cars, but I don't think it beats the Tesla Model 3 quite yet. So yeah, this is it. This is the Dolphin, the Atto 3 and the Seal, all from BYD. And I'm quite sure you're gonna see plenty of them on the UK roads very soon. Now, of course, for worldwide domination, you've also got MG with the MG4, the MG5, and they do a long range in that, by the way, which is a very good estate car. The MG ZS EV, which is all over the place in the UK, and of course, the Cyberster, or the Roadster Cyber Roadster, depending on how you want to say it. Great looking thing, this. Prices start at 50K well priced for the uk market i'm quite sure i doubt if you'll see them priced at that to begin with they'll probably fetch more towards the 60 with the demand but that should be a very very good seller for mg and at that kind of money well impressive Okay, next up is GWM, that's Great Wall Motors. They had a pickup truck for sale in Europe for a few years, didn't do that great. It was an old diesel thing. This is the Aura, the funky cat, the good cat as it's called in certain countries. Mid-range kind of car, gives about 160 mile on a full charge on the uh, standard model. They do a slightly bigger battery one, but they do about 200 mile on. Not for me, I'm afraid, but it's, they're selling. I've seen a few on the UK roads. Uh, so that's Great Wall Motors. That's the only car they actually got out here in the UK as yet. Others mentioned the Omoda 5 as an example there from the Cherry Company. Value it is. It starts at just under 30,000 for the EV version. Sadly, there may well be a petrol version as well, but that's the Omoda 5. Decent looking SUV. Both Xpeng and Neo are rumoured to hit the shores of the UK by the end of 2024, early 25 latest. Neo has the ultimate battery exchange unit as seen here. This is something that has actually happened in Norway already, outside of China. There is now two of these in Norway where you simply drive your car in, around three minutes later, it changes the battery for you and you move away and go. In other words, a fresh guaranteed 100% battery each time you want to do this. Okay, I've deliberately left Polestar out of this till this exact time because there seems to be a lot of confusion around Volvo and Polestar. Their parent company called Geely are obviously 100% Chinese. Every single Polestar at this present time is made in China. Now, earlier on, I did speak of geopolitics, which is a big thing between America and China, as we all know. Most, if not all, Polestars, as I said, were built in China, the Polestar 1 and 2. And now, here's the twist of the politics. The Polestar 3 is going to be made in the USA. Yep, you got it, folks, in the deep south of the USA in South Carolina. This is a great way of getting around it because if you buy or try and buy a Chinese car and import it into the USA, which is very doubtful that you would, there will be a 25% taxable charge for its import. If the vehicle is made in the USA, there is no charge. Or should I say, there is no import tax. Luckily for Volvo, Stroke Polestar or Geely, they do own this factory, which I believe opened in 2015, purely to make three versions of Volvos, none of them being electric. Now, this is where it gets interesting. They wanna make EVs, of course. They're gonna be made just outside that little town of Ridgeville in South Carolina. South Carolina is in the deep south of the USA, very quaint little town according to form but it's known about volvo obviously and employs people into volvo since 2015. now the evs are going to be made there this is a great way of getting around that tax because it's made in the usa it's still a chinese car when all said and done all the profits go back to china i guess it's just a game of politics that kind of china will win in the end at the end of the day they could set up factories all over the usa just the same as japan did in the late 70s early 80s to get around that same import scenario so at the end of the day even if you consider it being an american-made car it's still chinese china wants to be number one and i'm sure they will be this is a great takeover of the usa without americans really realizing it 
Now, I'm not normally one for blame culture, but on this scenario, with America being so anti-China with its car manufacturing, or with its imports, should I say, I do blame the extreme right of Republicans. And I'm not going to go into the massive politics of this, but it's obvious that's what's happening because they are the ones who are more anti-EV than anybody else. You know, you've only got to listen to the likes of Trump and all of his supporters. They do not like electric cars. And so if you're not going to invest in them and believe in them, where's it going to take you? OK, we'll leave the good old shores of the USA, one of my favourite countries in the world, down to Oz. Never been to Australia. OK, the Utes, they love them down there, the UTEs, pickup trucks as we call them. The electric version of the LDV is selling quite well. Uh, not a bad pickup truck at all, quite a good looking tool and does the job well with 280 kilometres real world range. Moving on from that, we have Havel. Boring SUV, hopefully it won't make the UK shores. Pretty average vehicle. In moving on to the top end of EVs for Australia, and that's the Zika, the Zika 009. I don't like this. I think it's a bloody ugly thing, to be honest, but there you go. That is just me. Everyone to their own. Interior is far better, don't get me wrong. Very stylish, quite good looking. This Zika needs to be good looking. Let's face it, with 113,000 Australian dollars as a starting price, it needs to be good on the inside and on the outside. Now, no one's saying that the build quality won't be very good, but at that money, wow, we are talking prestige car here. And I don't know if that's the right route to take for Chinese cars at this particular time in Australia. Keep them cheap, keep them nice, keep them well teched, and they will sell. But when you get to a certain price level, maybe not. But that's the Australian market covered. There you go. Let's move on. Now, straight into the stats, people. As you can see, Cherry, Geely, uh, BYD, Great Wall Motors, and back over this way, what we got? We've got Chang'an, then Sayak. Look at the growth. Look at the top figure, then look at the bottom figure. This is growth in sales, year on year. It's massive. China is going wild in its auto industry. It's just phenomenal the way that they've jumped forward. Now, this next one, you can always stop and look at these or go back. This next one is where European and American companies have put money into doing things with China companies. General Motors have got Sayak and Ford with Chang'an, Renault Nissan with others. Look, they're all there. Toyota, Merck, BMW. Some are starting to lose money now uh, because of the homegrown market in China not buying European cars anymore and American cars because there's a lot of Buicks and Cadillacs over in China. They're actually badged as Buicks and Cadillacs, but they are all made in China. So this all-American ideal is just not there, I'm afraid. Well, I've, I hope you enjoyed this one. I tried to give you a lot of information there about the cars that are coming on board, the ones that are already here from China, and my take on the America-China outlook without getting too political. There are some political views in there that um, I either agree with or don't. I do believe that China will have a massive control of the auto industry within the next five years. This is not just EVs. I base myself on EVs because that's what I believe the future is and hopefully it will be. And the outlook of the Chinese auto industry with EVs is massive. They do see it as the future. There are well over 80 companies, like I said on the beginning of this, selling small numbers, startup companies and everything else. And they bounced on this from five years back or even further back than that, when the, the, the majority of, of, of Western legacy automakers didn't want to know EVs, especially in America. China is well out in front of this now because they are advancing so quick and because they've got that leg up before we did, I when I say we, I mean the Western world, I don't think we'll ever catch them up. I do believe that there will be some businesses go bust and go under in the West, some automakers, because if China doesn't take them over or buy them out, purely because of the cost factor and the minerals that are needed for EVs, China has a upper hand in that as well. As I showed you with the battery technology, and the minerals underground before they even get them out. Well, do I think that China will win the EV wars? Yes, I do. Um, I've not got any confidence in America at the moment. There is so much fake news and garbage being put on TikTok and even on YouTube 
from certain quarters. Um, I won't name them, but you've seen them all on YouTube. And they give you the face of Biden. They go, EVs are over. Or they give you the face of the Ford CEO and say, that's it, no more EVs. And they all use the same format, same big photo of a face, and then a big underlying bold section of headline underneath it. And so there's that much American crap coming out on, on social media that um, I feel that the, the, the American market will collapse in its own shite, I do believe. Great shame, because I'm very pro-American, as you know, on this channel. I love American cars. I've owned American cars for years, decades, and had V8s and all the rest of it. And I always go on and tell you that because I don't want you to get the wrong impression. But on this particular item and this particular you know project we're talking about today, I do believe that China will kill the American auto industry if they don't start kicking some ass. And what I mean by that is the underlying Republican hardcore who are against EVs simply don't see the future. They don't see the fact that it's an inlet for China to get in, the same as it is in Mexico at the moment, because they'll just bring cheap Chinese imports in from Mexico, because some of them are already in Mexico being sold. So you're on a loss, you're on a loss straight away. If you don't support electric vehicles, your future is not in the auto industry. It's as simple as that. Europe is not so bad. We are not so left and right in politics when it comes to our EVs. We don't think that if you drive an EV, you're gay. If you drive an EV, you're a vegan. If you drive an EV, you'd be a Biden supporter. We're a bit more open-minded and, and a lot less ignorant in, in Europe, and especially in, here in the UK. I'd like to think so anyway. So I don't see our auto industry being hit as hard as I think the American one will be. Uh, because of the zero support from certain political parties in the US. Anyway, glad you liked it. I hope you've learnt, learnt something from it. I, I love putting this one together. I could do another two of these about Chinese imports. And me personally, will it hurt me if I go and buy another brand new Chinese made car? No, it won't. I believe they are excellent value for money and they're getting better and better. And if there's anyone out there that thinks different, I'm afraid you're very delusional. Don't think that legacy won't be hurt by the Chinese onslaught of electric vehicles and even some of their petrol ones because someone's going to get hurt along the way financially as well as job losses anyway I'm going to wrap it up thanks for watching all I can say is continue watching thanks for all the subscribers coming on board I'm, I'm averaging some great numbers now I'm going up and up and up all the time and thanks to you who have already subscribed uh, appreciate all of you out there who come and watch me rant I'm going to say goodbye get this edited, get it out there on YouTube for you, and you'll be watching this before I say, slinging my hand at that camera. What are you gonna do now? <laughs>